Hello! I know it's been a while since uh, I did a video, um, so I wanted to take the opportunity today to uh, come back, let you know that I'm still here. Uh, everything is good uh, after my uh, COVID con uh, videos that I did. Um, also, if you're watching this video, you may realize it's not live, um, as opposed to the other videos I did. And that's because today's video that I want to do is going to take some some time and some editing um, because what I would like to do is walk you through my process of how I create a comic book page from start to finish. And so some of that, um, it, there's parts where I will cut uh, and skip ahead because there's a lot of time where I'm, I'm just drawing and some of it you'll see, but you don't need to see every minute of it. Typically, a page of a, a comic book can take anywhere from six to ten hours of work. So this isn't going to be a six to ten hour long video. As I said, there'll be edits and cuts in there. But I did want to walk you through the process from the beginning to the end because I know for me that was one of the hardest things to sort of figure out when I was beginning was how does it work? Uh, where do I start? Right? I knew I could draw pictures but I didn't know how to start actually putting a comic book together. So here's where, a, where we're going to do that. So now what we're going to do is I'm going to cut over and show you the my table. And we're going to start with the number one thing you have to have, which is a story. And stories in comic books are written in a script form. And I'm going to show you the script that I'm working from. And it'll show you the next segment. And I'll walk you through my process. So let me just change our view real quick. Okay, and this is probably going to, yeah, it's going to be a little bright, but we got it. Okay, so this is what I'm going to be working on. So no real big spoilers. Hopefully that'll focus. You'll be able to see that. So what we have is page five. Uh, our characters are walking up to a, um, a house. And uh, as you can see, it says, Right, the door opens right before they get there, and a male butler welcomes them. We have some dialogue. Uh, the character asks the butler, apparently his name is George, how is he doing? The butler says, "Sirs, if you will follow me, everyone else is here in the wait in the meeting room awaiting your arrival." He opens the door. We can't see what's inside, and then the next two pages are a big double uh, page splash of all of the the characters. So what I've got to do is figure out how am I going to turn this into a page? So I've got to figure out how many panels do I need? And then what are those panels going to look like? So the first thing I do is I take the script like this and I read it a few times and I think about it and I see obviously what comes to mind as far as what kind of pictures and that kind of stuff. So the first thing we have here is there's a scene where the door opens before these characters are able to open the door. So my first thought is, you know, so you can show, I can show that from a couple different ways. I can show up from behind the main figures and show the door opening. But my thought is what I'm going to do is I think I want to show it from behind. So to be a silhouette of that, the crack of that door opening, we'll see them walking up to it and the figure, the silhouette of what we show is the butler. So that first section here, the door opens. This is going to be panel number one. Then uh, the character says, George, how are you? So I think that's going to be coming. We're going to flip the camera or view so that now we're going to see the figure who opened the door. So that's going to be number two. And then uh, if you follow me, everyone else here is in the waiting room. So they're going to be walking across like a foyer to where there's like some big double door. So you don't you haven't seen this yet but the the place they're walking into is like an old stone mansion kind of place very you know old timey old fashioned so i'm thinking this is going to be an a shot from up above looking down onto like a a checkered floor and seeing the top of them walking across it and then the fourth panel will be the butler starting to open these double doors and we will see there's a crack between them, but we won't see what's behind it. So now I figured out, I wanna tell this story in four panels. So 
you can do that in an infinite number of, well, maybe not an infinite number of ways, but I mean, a, a million different ways, right? So give you an idea here. Um, this is what a lot of folks do, by the way. Um, so you can see I've got my, this is the paper I'm actually going to draw on. This is what the page is going to be on. There are a million different ways to do this and to get it uh, onto here. Okay. So some people would just start, you know, real rough and just sketching and just figuring it out right here as they go. The other thing you could do is you could take a separate piece of paper and you can draw some, you know, rough rectangles and start to say, okay, maybe I want to do like one thing. I could do one, two, three, four. So I could do, you know, four panels of the same size, or I could do, I could do one and then I could do two. So, and then three and then four, I could do something like that. Um, there's also things you could do where you can overlap and stack them. So I could do, you know, one and then two and then three and then four. You can get as creative with the arrangement of them as you want. Stuff like this is can be interesting, but then you leave a lot of this dead space behind it. So I typically tend to stick with more traditional um, uh, formats, more traditional layouts. The other thing to take into consideration is what, you know, how do you want your book to look? So most of the panels so far, this is page five, so one through four have all been sort of um, this, more this horizontal. I've done much more horizontal to keep it more widescreen, like you know, sort of movie-like, I think. Um, but, you know, this is a little more, possibly a little more interesting. Um, I mean, like I said, there's any number of options. I could go um, so that he opens the door. They don't. So I could split one and two like this and go one, two, three, four. Um, I could make this off, off center one, two, three, four. So what I need to figure out is what's the most important element of this like what's the biggest what needs the most real estate um to me this this number three where they're walking across really establishes the the scene it shows you the space and and stuff so i feel like that needs a little more room so i'm thinking that's going to be kind of the center panel is three uh, so maybe something more like this would work. Now, what other folks will do, as I said, so there's a million ways to do this. What I do is now I will start to work this out on the page. And if I don't, I'm going to work fairly light uh, with my pencil. So if I don't like it, I just erase it. No big deal. Other people will take um, various, you know, like, uh, other pieces of paper here and they'll, you know, you can do this. You can fold it in half and that gives you kind of the the proportions you're looking at as a comic book page, right? And I can say, okay, now I'm going to start to sketch it. So maybe I'm going to do one, two, three, four. So one, and this is, uh, you know, all you're doing is bubble figures. This is all in shadow. This is in shadow. This is in shadow, and then we see our three figures outside walking up to the door, and then we see the butler guy. You know it's him because he's got his bow tie. And then This is where I was saying, this is the, um, you can see the door opens in. So I mean, you know, there's a door behind him. So then this door is like this. 
And we've got walls with, hey, there's a fireplace and there's bookshelves. And this, this floor is a tile floor and there's, I don't know, a column or something. And then there's maybe a painting here and there's these big double doors here and he's telling them everyone's waiting. So he's gesturing. So again, this, now we're, we're going from the top down. So all you're going to see is sort of the top of people's heads. And these guys, a couple of these guys have capes. So you do that. And then this becomes a grid. So we like that. And then the last one is, let's say we'll do the, the main characters in the foreground and him the the butler is doing that thing where he's he's bending forward and opening the doors so we see he's, and he's gesturing them in but we don't see what's inside so it's so the doors are something like that um so so you could do like that so this is what some folks would do they would do it this way work it out on paper first and then have you if you like this you go okay i can work with this how do i get this onto here so this is where some people use technology you could scan this um, and you can print it onto this um, in a nice light blue color, like uh, these outlines on the board. You could, um, uh, some people used to use photocopiers. Again, you could scan, I could scan this and print it in the size that I want and then use what's called a light box where you take a, it's a literally a box with a light inside of it that shines up through the paper and you can trace it out. So I could trace all this, blow it up, trace all this in here. Some people do digital, so they'll go on their computer and they'll essentially draw the page with lots of details and stuff on the computer and then print it on here and then the ink it on here. So there's a million different ways to do it. Um, so for me, uh, sometimes I'll do this if I'm not sure and I'll go, okay, that, that works. Other times, like I said, I'll just sort of work it out straight here. Um, but I think this works. I kind of like this uh, where I'm going with this. So the next step um, for me is now that I have this, I'll take it and I will keep it up here on my board, on my drawing table, so I can look back at it anytime I want. So the next step is to draw out the, um, the actual uh, panel borders so I know where stuff is going to go. And for that, I will need my ruler. Uh, again, not super exciting, but it's all part of the process, right? So what I've got to do is I've got to figure out from my little sketch, how much do I, how much real estate do I need on here? And uh, for anybody who knows, uh, if we've talked about it before or you've seen it, it's about 10 and a quarter inches, uh, or maybe close to 10 and a half inches by 15 inches is this space that I have to draw in. So uh, this uh, page is nice, and uh, you probably can't see it from this detail, but the lines along the side of the, of the board here um, are measured in inch increments um, with quarter and eighth inch marked out. So if I decide that this top one, I want to make this top section of the, of the book, um, I'm going to do four inches, I think. So if I do four inches, that gives me 11 left, so I could do six or seven and then on the bottom. So all I have to do is look for the four inch marks here on either side. And I know I'm automatically lined up, right? So that helps. Uh, so the next thing to talk about is um, the spaces in between the panels. This is what we call panel gutters and gutters are like i said it, it's just literally that it's just a space between the panels to break them up so it doesn't trick the eye into thinking it's thinking it's one big drawing 
some comics, a lot of modern comics do not put a space in between. Um, I've tried it. It's not for me. I like the old school look of the spaces in between. So in this particular case, I've been using the one eighth inch uh, mark that's already on the board to go ahead and make my break. So now this is one big panel and then this would be the next. You can make this space in between at any size you want. It could be uh, an eighth of an inch, a quarter of an inch, a sixteenth of an inch. You can color it black. You can ask the colorist to color it a different color. It could be anything you want, or you can have nothing at all. It's totally up to you. Um, so let's see. So from the bottom, 15, if I want to do another four, I would go to 11. Uh, let's do five. I want a little more space in that bottom one because I've got characters in the foreground and the middle ground. So I want to give myself enough room. So, I'm gonna, so this time I went up from the bottom. And now I'm going to go again that eighth of an inch line. So now I have three out of four, but the top one I wanted to split. So now I've got to come across and go, okay, how much room do I need for that? And again, I, I sort of eyeball it first and say, okay, maybe, yeah, maybe like that. And so where that lines up is about six inches from the right. So I'll go to the six inch mark. Oops. And line that up from top to bottom, which again, it's just really useful to have that already on the board for you so that you don't have to worry about measuring it out. Now, I do have boards where um, uh, it's not pre-measured and I have absolutely measured that out my, you know, myself, which is not a big deal. Now, the other thing to remember with all this that we're doing so far, everything here is in pencil. So if I decided once I start drawing that I really need a lot more room in this panel, I could scoot this over or vice versa. Or if I wanted to scoot this down a little bit, whatever I want to do, I have variation within all of this um, because it's still in pencil. Oh, and to give you an idea, so this uh i'll talk about materials very quickly this paper um is you can probably see comes from a company called eon um, i've had this for a long time it is a heavy duty um smooth bristol board in fact yeah it says smooth 2010 i don't know if i actually actually had this for 11 years now but it's possible um and if I have, boy, it's held up well. You can see it hasn't yellowed or, or aged very well. Um, so that's good. Or it's aged well. Um, so Eon, uh, there's also a company called Blue Line Pro that I use um, that makes that kind of paper. Um, there's also some stuff you can get in some art supply stores. Um, this one is Strathmore, the actual, um, right? Is it Canson Strathmore? Um, but it's, you can see it's the same sort of thing. I'll do it this way. It's the same size, the same paper. It has the blue lines on it. Not sure if you can see. These are not measured. So you would have to do all your measurements yourself. Um, the important thing for me is on all of this paper is that it is smooth. That's important to me. It has to be 11 by 17. Um, and then, um, you can, as far as then the different weights of the paper, how thick it is totally up to you. Um, but 11 by 17 Strathmore Bristol, and I use smooth. There's other types, uh, where the, it has a finish. You can use vellum, um, and then plate is even harder than this. So I like the smooth. Everybody's got their own preferences, totally up to you. The pencil that I was working with that I do kind of a lot of my work with is just a, you know, Staples brand Pilot 0.05, and I could put any lead I want into it, right? Um, 
What I'm going to use next, though, is a lead holder. So this is a Techmatic. I don't remember where I got this from. It's a, but all it does is it's like a little claw inside at the end that holds this stick of lead. I think I've talked about these before. This one is very soft. So the lines are gonna be dark, but easy to erase. And this is where I start to reproduce what I did over here with just like bubble figures and stuff, real loose, real sketchy. Just to sort of start to fit in all of the, the pieces and the uh, make sure the, the composition of all of the, um, the things makes sense. So, to start with, like right here, I, I want the guy opening the door. And now I have to think in my head, like which, and it's important, which side of the door is hinged? Which side does the door open? So, right, if I did it this way, this would be a door where he walked up. If he walked in from the, in, from the outside, it'd be opening from your left, which typically does not happen. Right. Uh, if you think about like your front door, what side of the door is your is your door handle on? Is it on the right? Or is it on the left? Most of the time, it's going to be on the right. So I'm going to switch that around. And it doesn't. That's one where again, I can just I'm not so you know I'm not stuck on the that little bit. It erased really easy. I can do that. So now if uh, that's on the right hand side, so now the door would be opening in this way. So maybe I can show his hand coming up and opening the door. I haven't decided if it's going to be a, uh, like a, like a round door or a square door yet. Um, I will do the other door casing and now, and then it, over here we'll have our, our hero figures who are coming to the door and then we'll do enough of the, of the background behind them so that we know that's where they, it's going to tie into the panel that came before. So then when we see the Butler figure, Shows. Uh, I might do. I might do a full figure. And then he's had, he'd have his hand on the door, and now we can really see like you can see the door frame and uh, the space behind him some, and then the door would open in. So maybe he's got to back up, but again, just sort of playing that out to see what we're doing. And then like I said, this one's going to be a sort of isometric over the top view. And then um, one of the things that I'll need to do when you do, um, when you do pieces like this, where you really change the point of view a lot, um, the next thing you need to work out is the perspective. So I could fake it and hope that I get it right, or I can actually do the perspective. So when it comes down to that piece, like I said, right now is just rough blocking in shapes and stuff. Um, I'll show you how we do, how I would do a perspective grid to make sure that I'm getting it all right. So that the perspective is correct. Um, and then maybe there's, no, it's a checkerboard. Maybe there's a rug in the middle of the floor, stuff like that. Again, making it fancy bookshelves and fireplace and paintings on the walls and stuff like that in the foyer and then lastly we've got figures in the center 
so that we're looking, you know, over their shoulders, basically, right? Got this guy, he's now uh, maybe he's open hey, double doors. If you're gonna, let me think, you open them this way. Hmm, how would you open double doors? Yeah, maybe that works. So, if I move this figure slightly to the side. This is where your eraser is your best friend at this stage of the game. So if I put the center of the doors here, and he's pulling them to him, they would be opening like that. Again, this is one where you got to do the perspective correctly, which can be tricky. Bigger doors. And then he is so maybe that's why you can't see what's behind them is because he's in the way. But we've already established the double doors are over here, and so we can put the stuff next to them. We can even make them bigger. Yeah, that works. So, what I'm sure it looks like uh, to you guys is a scribbly hot mess. But to me, this is the roadmap of what I want to do. And it shows me, you know, all the things that are going to work. Uh, you know, what's going to work, what isn't going to work. And then, as well, places where maybe I do want to add in some stuff like I can just like we have down below I can add these figures in the foreground so we know who's talking um yeah uh, so that gives me uh like I said a roadmap I feel comfortable with how the storytelling is going to go from inside we see the door opening we see the character who's opened the door we can tell because there's a door open and then behind him we see some of the details right that are here so we know it goes here here this is the inside that's opened up we can see it we've established these double doors that he's pointing to and then this panel with him opening those doors so the storytelling to me makes sense i feel comfortable with where it's at so the next thing i'm going to do is i'm going to um ink ink in the borders lock that in and then that way um as i'm trying to draw and and create the finished pencil piece of it that i'm i'm going to ink i know this is my constraint and that the pencils aren't going to bleed together or i'm not going to think one of the lines like this is a I don't know, this is the, the uh, door line or whatever. So I like to do that next is panel, is ink in the panel borders and then start drawing inside of them. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, this is one of those edits, hopefully. I'm going to uh, stop it here. I'm going to then do some of that work, do some more of the penciling work so that when we come back, you're going to see most of that in that next stage and i'll show you how i get there and kind of finish up a little more of that then after that comes the final all the inking and that work so there we go so this is step one so uh, you know kind of combine multiple steps but um we've got you know where it starts from when you've got the script right so it's written so you've got to break this down and figure out what you want to do then comes your initial idea of how do I want to lay out the page? And you can see I changed as I went. This got flipped. This got pushed back. Uh, this is pretty much the same. And then the, the way he's opening the doors, instead of from the side, he's going to open the doors out to them, which makes sense. So working through all that stuff um, to here, and then um, from here, we'll see next steps after that. So um, stick around. 
uh, like I said, this is the overall video will be kind of long, but we'll have some edits in between and um, we'll get to the next step in just a second. Okay, and we're back. So as you can see, there's been some changes in this quick edit. Um, quick for you, not as quick for me. So um, see the, uh, the bind of the bottom of the page is cut off a little bit. So what I've done is I've gone ahead and done pencils on three of the four panels. So down below here, I've blocked in where my figures are gonna be very roughly. Uh, the doors opening, uh, there's a picture frame. I haven't decided what's going to be in the picture yet. Um, that kind of stuff. And then this one, what I did, I don't think you can probably see it because I did them deliberately very lightly, but there's a spot in the center and I did all of these grid lines out from there so that everything follows the perspective of you looking down at one single point from straight down. And that's what we're doing. So um, the other thing, uh, you can see these squares. So I blocked out, um, it's supposed to be a black and white tile floor. The X's indicate the, the tiles that would be black. So that I know when I go in to do the ink, I already know which ones are going to be solid black and which ones aren't. So I, I, I've already established that pattern. And then up here, we've got uh, the figures in the foreground. We have our uh, butler character. Um, open opening the door for them and so what i've left is this one panel here that i'm going to finish um penciling the way i've done these other ones to show you what i'm going to do now um it's important to note if this if i was going to take this and hand this over to someone who is an anchor to say go ahead and ink this i've left them with very very little to go on the, the a few dark areas some very very rough lines uh, they'd have to figure out a lot so i would be relying on the inker to be more of what i would call a finisher so these would be what you would call roughs um rough pencils because i have not indicated a lot of specifics now, I am my own inker, so because I'm my own, my own inker, I don't have to worry about telling myself exactly where I want all of the shadows and the hatching and what parts are going to be dark, what parts are going to be light. I can work that out as I go, um, but I would never hand this over to an inker to just say, go ahead and ink this. So just to give you an idea, of that's, that's the difference. Um, uh, I'll, I'll see. I'll, sh I'll show you. So, um, yeah. So we'll do this one here. So um, what we've got is the the guy, and we've I've established back here that he's got sort of a, a thin hairline, but not um, he's not bald, um, but it's relatively thin. And then the the part is on his right, which would be this side. So it's going to kind of go like. Now, one of the things that will help for me is that, as I said, this figure is all going to be in silhouette. So I don't have to go in and say like, okay, you know, here's the, here's the ear and I got to put in the folds of the ear and then that's going to go down there, the, his hair. And then I've got to, you know, go through and, and do like the shading of the hair. I don't have to do that because this is all going to just be solid black because it's brighter outside than it is inside. So I've given him his collar, part of the bow tie, his collar, cuff of his, or the, yeah, back of the collar of the, of the jacket, his arm. And again, like, uh, because I'm my own inker, it doesn't matter if I pencil this line straight or not. I just have to indicate that it's there. And when I go in to, um, to ink it, I'll use a ruler and I'll make sure that it's a straight line. Uh, so the door, this is one of the things that I find can be difficult that you don't think about a lot. Like someone's opening a door and there's a door casing. 
like when you open the door, how much of the outside door casing do you see? Right. So there's going to be in this in this case, it's a it's a stone building on the outside. So you're going to see a little bit of that stone wall and that's going to be like that. And then I've established here that it's sort of like an, uh, a wood, almost like a, like a castle door with the metal bands across it. So I can sort of indicate that like that. And then on this side, I'll do the door casing over here so we can tell that he's looking through the door casing. And now the three figures. So the small, uh, the smallest one is in the center, but he's slightly behind the other two. So I'm going to do this figure here and he's got, so I'm flipping uh, the three that are down here or, or in this one here. Sorry. So they're flipped. So this guy with the, spiky hair and the thing sticking out from behind him is going to be here and he'll be slightly in front and then the smaller figure is going to be here and there's another large figure that's also slightly overlapping here. Because this guy's this guy in the back here, he's he's nervous. This is his first time hanging out with the big time superheroes. So he's a little bit on the nervous side. So he's kind of hanging back a schmigan. And then uh, the path they were walking up, there were some bushes. There were some trees behind them. And then on the ground, there was uh, bricks. So if we see any of that, that would be it. So um, there's a few things here that we're not going to, to leave. Uh, so what I'll do is I'll show you what I would do if this was a piece I was going to hand off to an inker to have them ink it. So I'm going to work out all this stuff here with the what's going to be in the shadow. Now, the thing you can do, if it's all going to be in shadow, um, you can just put X's in it. And you just put an X's, and that tells whoever's going to do the ink work, that's solid black. Go ahead and just make it all solid black. That way, you don't, you don't have to spend your time coloring it all in. It also, in the old school where... Um, inkers would ink right on top of your pencils, like the way I do it. If I leave this like this, I don't have to erase as much. And there's no chance of the ink not sticking to the page as well because there's all this graphite underneath it. Um, or you can go ahead and you can fill it all in. Um, and then that way, when uh, a lot of inkers these days work off of scans, so I would scan the pencils, the, that would help show them what's supposed to be uh, all shadowed out. And then they're going to print it onto a new piece of paper with this blue, and they're going to ink it on a new piece of paper. So it, they don't have to erase anything. Uh, they'll just ink over the top, um, and the blue lines won't show up when they rescan it. So I could color all that in, and that really helps illustrate what's, what's dark, what's not, and it, in case they're not sure what the X's are. So, but that's what I would do there. And then <clears throat> here's the other trick that I would do, because I've got a lot of lines and a lot of stuff going on. And the key to um, handing something off to an inker to do that next step is to make it as clear as possible. 
I don't want them to have to guess about what line I want, what line I don't want. Is this part of a costume? Should this be, what is this? So I'm going to clean this up and, and make it more, um, a more detailed drawing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this, uh, this art eraser, this gum eraser, and lightly erase over what I've drawn here. And all this does is just allow me to go back over the top of it, almost like inking. Um, so it's a whole nother step where I'm taking, you know, these rough pencils and now I'm going to draw more detailed finished pencils over the top of them. Um, because again, because I ink my own pages, I don't need to do this. I can... I could take a page like or a panel like this one here that's very rough and just work out all the details straight with the inks. Um, but we're just going through the motion and showing you um, how I would do this. So this is where I'm going to be very, I'm going to be, I say very, I'm going to be more precise with the lines that I'm drawing so that there's no guesswork or at least as little as possible. Now, the best thing about working with an inker is that you're working with another artist who can bring something extra and better to your work to make it, you know, the, the sum of the parts is, Right? Is that it? The sum of the parts is greater than the whole? No. In this case, though, well, yeah. the point is they're they're enhancing what I would be doing. So, um, so if they have a better way um, to show this silhouette, or maybe they don't want to have it, maybe they want to add a little halo of light around the front or some texture or something. Um, then that's just going to make it that much better. And they're bringing their own artistic flair to the project, to the piece, and that's what we want to see. So here's where I said I'm going to... I said ruler, but in this case, I'm using a triangle. Either way, I'm using a nice straight line so I can get a nice 90 degree there. And then this is also going to be... So now, in this case... Sorry, I'm working around the camera. And this is why it's important if you do get um, drafting tools, whenever possible, like your triangles, your rulers, get transparent ones so that as you draw over the top, you can see what's, what's underneath it. So if you need to leave spaces like I did, that is a huge help. So highly recommend... Um, transparent drafting tools. Big, big, big help. And so hopefully you're starting to see what I'm, what I'm talking about in regards to what a cleaner ink or cleaner pencil line looks like. And then now this, uh, these lines are supposed to be, these are wood, right? So these are wood planks, wood slats that, um, make up the door. So I actually don't want these to be perfectly straight. I want them to have a little wobble so that they feel organic. Relatively straight, but right, the idea is mostly um, they're going to be organic. And then I'm going to do the... 
wood texture here. So this would be, again, where I'm drawing the wood texture for the inker. If they don't follow it exactly, if they've got something better to add to it, uh, great. You know, more, more power to them. I'm all for that. Uh, the reality is I just don't get a chance to work with inkers uh, very often. Um, most of the time I do end up inking my own work just out of necessity. Um, so this is all stuff that I wouldn't, I would not draw this in pencil. I would just draw it straight with the ink pens. Um, but this is a, hopefully an, an educational and a learning video, and it's going to help somebody who's trying to figure out how they want to work, um, how they want to make comics make art. And so if you, if you're new and you're trying to understand what level of detail you need to send an inker, this is what we're showing. This is what I'm talking about. And again, like, so these are supposed to be stones or some sort of a brick um, door casing because the outside of the, the building is brick. Now, I could just draw the, the grout lines, but, or the mortar lines, but there's always going to be that little bit of brick, that little bit of overlap. Now, again, this is something that I would have done as I was inking it, but if I'm going to give it to an inker, I've got to make sure, if I'm, if I really, if that's important, I absolutely have to draw it in to make sure that they, they see it and you see what I'm going for. And now you're going to see the shift in the perspective. These lines are going up and back. And then theoretically, this would be straight and back because this is the horizon line. And now underneath is going to go down and back. Um, it's a pain in the butt, but I highly recommend um, anybody who's drawing comics, comic art, etc. Um, anything where you're trying to depict real stuff, buildings, cars, you name it, I highly, highly recommend that you do some studies, some perspective uh, drawing studies. It's a, it's one of the harder things you'll have to do. Um, once you get it and you start up being able to apply the concepts, it will make It'll make your art look so much better. Um, and it will also really help you make things easier. Um, with the piece below, the, pa the panel below where I did the one point perspective looking straight down, everything follows these guidelines out from the center. So I didn't have to guess at um, how a, a picture frame, how it would go on the wall. It's going to follow the same lines. The doors it followed the lines I already drew. So it was very easy for me to figure out how that would all work. Um, and with bigger things like cityscapes or whatever, um, the more of that time you plan to lay out your perspective grid and your drawing makes a huge, huge, huge difference. Um, let's see here. Um, so one of the things um, that you can do as well. So you, so with comics, the artists use the thickness of the ink line to depict what's close and what's far or what's being lit and what's in shadow, right? So here, all my pencil lines are all the same thickness. If I want the inker to put a thicker line around the things that are closer up, right, to help differentiate them between that and the, the foreground, things would get fainter, less distinct as you move back. Um, again, if I'm going, if I don't trust the inker to just do it on their own, or I go, well, I'll, I'll see what they come up with, then as a penciler, I would come in here and I would thicken up these lines 
so that they would then know, okay, this has a thicker outline here to help move it, to put it in the foreground and then move these figures that are coming up into the background or middle ground, I guess. I don't have to do it around the silhouette because that's all going to be solid black, right? Same thing, I would do it around this door edge. I'm going to thicken up the door edge. I'm going to thicken up the splits between the wood uh, planks of the door. Now, these bars across, um, in my mind, I, I think they would be black. So what I, now, what I could do is I could just leave it. I could let the anchor do it. I could go like this and let them figure out how do you, how do you draw it black, but still keep the circles in it? Are the circles white? Are the circles whatever? Um, again, just as a exercise, what I'm going to do is I'm going to fill this in mostly black, leaving a white space around, you can see around the edge, and that would be where light would be hitting the black object and casting a slight reflection or just being lit up. Um, and then underneath it is also going to be darker. And again, this is where I, if I was going to work with a good inker, um, I would give them leeway and say, okay, what do you want to do from here? So I've just added a shadow underneath that you have options. You could feather it down into the wood like this, sort of working with that grain where the shadow is darkening up some of the finer wood grain below it that helps it read as a shadow. You could then, if you wanted to, you could even cross hatch. So the more lines you make, the darker your shadow becomes and it adds texture, so you can do something like that. I will also do on the back side of these sort of nails or knobs or bolts, whatever they are, I'll add a shadow on the back side of those. I'll do the same thing here. So you can see there's a lot of, um, there's a lot of decision making you have to do on every bit of every panel that you that you're drawing and so much of it as I keep saying like it depends it depends on who's your who's going to ink this after is it you is it someone else who's going to um, is it going to be color work so if you're going to color this in um, is that going to change how you shade it for sure um, depending on, uh, it, I would think you, for me, I would use less, um, less line work potentially and leave more open for the colorist. Definitely use less black shading. Um, if we're going to use color and color, um, you know, digital color, because instead of this being all solid black, they could use browns and tones, um, to add that shading to the wood. And that would look a little more natural than, you know, traditional, this is traditional comic book. Um, this is a way to use black and white lines to indicate shadow. Um, if the if the comic's gonna stay black and white, what do you do? If the comic's gonna stay black and white, now you have to do a lot more shading um, because it's the only, it's the only thing they're telling the eye what's, what's happening, what's going on. So that is definitely all stuff that you have to, you have to know going in 
these are um, like if I drew this in mind to be black and white and then uh, we later decided no nope, it's going to be color that may prove to be problematic for the colorist so anyway it's just stuff to think about um, and things as I said that happen in every piece that you do um, especially when you're working with a team of people um, the more the more that you do on your own the the less the less uh, advanced decision making you have to do because you're doing it all all yourself so if you if you want to change your mind so be it uh, the only person you know you have to answer to is you so that that makes it easy right uh, let's see here you've got your classic sort of take on a Batman utility belt. Actually, what I'm going to do, this is a different pencil. I'm going to show you this one. This is um, just, a, it's another mechanical pencil, but this one is a 0.3 millimeter lead. So it's a much thinner lead. Um, and I typically use a slightly harder um, lead in it um, so that the lines are a little bit lighter. And this is good for really small, small detail areas. Um, so as these figures in the background are much smaller, for things like the hatching and stuff, I'm going to use the this pencil. So good to have um, different tools uh, available to you as you're going because you're going to find that um, you're going to need different tools for different for different jobs right sometimes you want to uh, you know as i showed earlier as i'm doing as i'm doing the rough stuff uh, sometimes you want a big blunt soft pencil sometimes you want uh, a very small sharp uh, pencil sometimes you want a in between Right, and that's what the first pencil uh, or the last pencil I was just using was. Um, I actually even used another pencil. So this is another one of those lead holders. Um, you can see the little claw that comes out oops, that comes out to hold the ink. The lead in here is very very hard, so it is very very light. Um, it doesn't. Um, it's so that's what I used on the grid that I did here that I'm, again, I don't think you can see it, but you can see sort of the point where I where I started everything. So I made a grid and I was able to draw over it pretty easily because that's a, a much lighter um, ink, ink, uh, lead. So that's, um, yeah, that's what I did there. So yeah, so, so far, this page, uh, I've used four different pencils. Um, I've used the triangle, my clear ruler. I used a special ruler that I have for making parallel lines as I was doing the, the floor grid there. So this makes nice parallel lines. So I use that. So, um, yeah, there's no shortage of, uh, of tools that you can have or that you oh yeah, that's right or that you may need uh at your disposal so if you uh if you decide to uh like i said to to draw comics i highly highly recommend um you know becoming a uh becoming familiar with different um, uh, websites where you can uh, buy different art tools. Uh, I think it's called drafting, uh, drafting steels maybe, um, is one where you can get a lot of cool um, drafting tools like that, that parallel ruler, um, stuff like that. Um, 
you know, you need, you know, templates, uh, you know, circles, uh, French curve templates, um, all that kind of stuff can be extremely helpful as you're moving ahead. And then the other thing that's always good that I have all, I, you, you can't see it here. I have reference stuff all over my board. So I had this little, this little sketch down here that I started to sort of give me an idea of what the butler was going to look like. Over here uh, <clears throat> is actually a page, an earlier page from this, from this issue that's got all three of these characters in their costume so I can see their costume details. Um, I have another one over here. This is the page right before. So you can see there's the, the house and the trees and the bushes and you know, sort of where they're walking. So I have that because I'm going to have to reference that. So yeah. Um, and then of course, always having your, uh, your phone at the ready so you can look up things like Butler uniform or um, um, what else? <clears throat> old, old mansion, um, a Victorian mansion, or you know things of that nature. Um, never, never hurts to have around. So again, as is as we're moving to the space behind, the detail is going to become less. So I'm going to go ahead and kind of draw much much fainter. I'm not going to worry about putting in all of the detail um, because it's further away from from the viewer, from where it would be your eyes. Right, so like his nose and mouth sort of just become hints with lines with shadows. Um, here. So again, sort of hinting he's behind them, so he's got a belt buckle at his down. He does have a, a cape behind him. So we've got that. And a little, little shadow ticks there. Um, and then, as I said, we've got... I established they were walking up a path with some trees. So we'll put in trees. And the, depending on the type of tree you do, you can you can do leaves, you can do you know pine trees which are have more of a shape. I've always found the key to like trees and bushes and uh, vegetation and stuff like that is to try to be as random as you can um, while continuing a general shape. Right? They're all good. They all when we see it. You know a tree you know what it looks like it's sort of bigger on the top it has a crown of, of leaves it it had it makes the the trunk makes sort of that shape as the branches go out so we know that shape is there but then internally some of it sticks out towards you some of it sticks out away from you um, there's dark spots there's light spots there's shadows all that sort of stuff so you need to um again be sort of try to add an element of randomness, of natural element to it, which is very, you know, it's the illusion of, I guess, of randomness, because none of us can truly make 
random shapes, I guess. Uh, unless we have our eyes closed, I suppose. So this is all. This is all behind them with their, and then this is going to be shaded. This will be some shading. There'll be some shading here. Uh, some shadow here. And then they were walking up a path that had uh, bricks on it. So just kind of do that to emphasize some bricks. Some bushes. Again, details of bushes. And then what I'm just going to do here is I'm going to take again this, the first pencil I had with the real um, blunt edge, the, the soft dark lead. I'm going to fill in the silhouette of this character. Now, like I said, so if I was uh, normally, I wouldn't do this. Uh, I wouldn't do it for myself because I know. Um, it's going to. Um, I'm just going to end up having to erase all the all the uh, graphite after, all the lead after. Um, but what it uh, again? I'm showing you what you might want to do if you are going to provide this to an inker. Uh, if you're doing your pencils, the other thing this helps me do is if I color this all in black, there's going to be areas where this is black and this is black. So I don't want those two things to come together to make it look like it's all one piece. So what I've got to do is add a slight space between the two uh, to do that. So I will do like that. And I've done that here around the dark part of his mask, um, which that's fine. And that should work. And you can see like, the sh if I'm going to do shading on the trees, I again, I will leave a, a halo around the silhouette. Um, and there, so that shows me where the, the dark parts line up. So that should work out fine. So um, there are more details that I am going to be doing. Um, I'm going to come up with a design for this. This is a rug, and it's going to have a design of the, the super team that they're coming to me. I've got to decide what I want to put in this painting here. I'm going to do some research and find maybe a, a famous painting and try to put it in there. Um, but uh, yeah, so you see, oops, I forgot, I forgot to shade in his arm. There's always something you'll forget to guarantee. But again, if I was, so just looking at this one panel, if I was going to send this to an inker um oh that's right shoot so i kind of messed up i forgot that this is supposed to be there i haven't done this in so long like i said i just keep i just ink my myself this is supposed to be the other part of the door frame I forgot all about that. Why didn't you guys remind me? Oh, because you're watching this and it's already recorded and I couldn't hear you anyway. Silly me. That becomes an awfully narrow door frame. Let's see. So this is another, here, going back to supplies, this is another eraser uh, that I like, which is because it's thin, um, you can sort of click it out and you can um, extend it, but 
I like the, the thin nature to it where I can erase specific stuff without getting in too far. I do have one of these, uh, which is not bad for sort of medium size. And then I've got this for when lots of stuff has to be erased. So let's see if I cut this back. Do I want to cut it back to here or does it even need to be here at all? That, that is the question. Still, yeah, I think I should have left it. I don't think we need it. We can tell, we can tell enough that this is, that especially once we get here we'll be able to tell that that's the door that's the guy so we can tell that's him opening a door we don't need we don't need that other door frame i don't think so we'll just go back and add in right. so we'll fix that there we go so this video um uh, again, thank you for watching. I appreciate it very much. I hope it's been educational. I hope it's been informational. Um, this takes you through from the time you get a script or the time you write a script to the point where you're penciling the pages. And maybe either you're ready to, you know, the whole thing looks like this. You're ready to send it to an inker or um, you're ready to start inking yourself. So um, I'm going to end here as a part one. And then um, when I'm ready to start inking this page, we'll pick it back up with part two and get into the next steps of, uh, of inking a comic book page. Again, I hope you enjoyed it. Thanks so much. And I will see you all again very soon.